Oh, hey guys, CPT Mechanic here, and today I'm going to show you how to do an oil line filter change on a 2007 Ford Bantam 1.6 row cam. Let's get cracking. So, the sump plug is located on the driver side, just next to the front wheel, facing backwards. Quite easy to find. So, all you need is a 13mm spanner or socket, place it on the sump plug and turn it anti-clockwise. Sometimes the plug can be very tight, so you might need a breaker bar to crack it loose, but mine luckily wasn't. So it's best practice to warm up the car, just a bit to get the oil flowing nicely. It'll make it flow much easier out if the oil is a bit warm. As you can see it's quite dark, and, and I caught it just in time for replacement or change. So this is the sump plug itself, with a little rubber gasket on, to keep the oil in. It's about 50 bucks. So, here's all the oil drained. Let's just wipe it up, clean it up, and insert the new plug back in. Start by hand tightening. Please don't use the impact tool on this. Hand tighten the threads, get it nice and snug, and use a spanner or socket to nip it up or tighten it up. The book says 22 newton meters if you do want to use a torque wrench, but I prefer not to. It just needs to be tight enough so it won't fall out easily. You don't need to go ham on it at all. And just use a rag to clean up any remaining oil around the, the plug itself. Just nice and tight. That's all you need to do. You don't need to strip the threads at all over tightening. So now we have the oil filter. The oil filter was ridiculously tight for some reason. I had to use a oil filter wrench to loosen it and then use my hands to remove it. You can you put some sandpaper over the filter to cause some friction and, and allow it to grip but that didn't work in my case. Once I cracked it loose I used my hand and that's all the residual oil falling out. It will dirt your hands a bit because it is upside down, but that's part and parcel of the job. And there we go, that's the folder off. So I've opted for a Wix folder, it's about 140 bucks or so at the local auto parts store. And it's best practice to oil up put some fresh oil around the gasket just to make sure it seats properly and it comes loose easily next time you want to remove it. If it's not oiled, you will struggle. I can guarantee that. So as you can see, I'm pre-filling it with some oil. You really don't need to do this, but I've opted for this because it does go in upside down. If it went in sideways or right way up, I wouldn't be doing it. It's not necessary, but I've done it. And just some more oil on the gasket. So it's time to refit the filter. I have cleaned up around the housing, don't worry about it. I have done it off camera. And that's just me fitting the oil, the oil filter. You don't need to use any tools or torque wrench. Tightening by hand is good enough. Yes, I'm using a cloth, but that's just to give it some more purchase and to clean up around the area. Just tightening by hand is perfectly fine. So now it's time to put some oil in. Let's start by taking off the cap and removing the dipstick. So funnel in. Luckily my funnel has a mesh filter to catch any large debris that might fall in. And the book says to use 15 W40 semi-synthetic or multigrade oil. I've opted for Shell Helix HX5 because I know Shell to be a very good brand. So this engine takes about 4 liters to 4.3 liters worth of oil filter change. So all you have to do is top up and allow it to fill. Top up and allow it to drain. So repeat that for about half the bottle to 3 quarters of the bottle. 
So with the filter out, the next step is to check the oil level. It's best to put it on the full mark. Yes, I have cleaned the dipstick before checking, don't worry about it. And as you can see, it's on the full mark. There are two indents on the dipstick, the lower and upper mark. And as you can see, it's on the full, on the full mark. Once the engine has started, some of the oil will circulate through the system and the level will drop. So don't worry about it. Keep it at the full or slightly over full for now. But remember, too much oil can be a bad thing and too little oil can be a bad thing. So let's just refit the cap and go crank the engine. Everything's tight, let's go. So as you can see, here's the dashboard. Let's turn the key on, watch the oil light, start the car, and then it disappears after a second. If your oil light doesn't disappear after the 5 or 10 seconds, switch off your car immediately and go check the dipstick. It might be too little pressure in the system. And with the car off. Right, let's check the level once more. So remove the dipstick, wipe it off. With well, the old rag or paper cloth will be fine. Insert it and then remove it once again. And check the level. It's on the lower mark. So even though I pre filled the oil filter, the oil has circulated through the system and needs a top up. So I left the dipstick out because I'll use it again and cap off. So, once again, oil filter uh, funnel in and let's top it up. About 500 moles or so should be enough. But remember to check it after topping it up. That was about 500, maybe 250 moles. And then once again, check the level. So, dipstick in and then remove. And have a look at that, just below the full mark. It's near perfect because you want the level to be in between the minimum and maximum level. As I said earlier, too much is a bad thing and too little is a bad thing. So, just to make everything clean before we're done, clean up your tappet cover, your oil cap, and please take the car for a test drive, just to get the oil circulated and warm. And once you're done, check the level once again. If it needs a top up, do so. If it's in between the minimum and maximum, that's perfectly fine. And just clean up any residual oil and debris. And there we go. That's job done.